most welcome to Historiespanerna, History Reconnaissance. This is dust off. Medical evacuation in the Vietnam War. During the war, from the early 1960s to March 1973, helicopter ambulances moved almost 900,000 US and Allied sick and wounded. Dust off was a tactical call sign for medical evacuation missions, first used in 1963 by Major Charles L. Kelly commander of the U.S. Army 57th Medical Detachment, Helicopter Ambulance. The name Dustoff lasted the rest of the war. And please, like, share and subscribe. It means a lot to us. Injury is urgent. Shrapnel wounds. They will identify with smoke. The area is insecure. Okay, first, bring the map out with you. Yankee uniform. Okay, right here. One four four zero seven three. Right here. Okay.
Phone 65, just off 31. 65, Bill. Be on your pad in four minutes. We have the two patients on board. One has a gunshot wound in the leg, the other one has a gunshot wound in the back. Dust of 31, mission 404 is done. Next is 405, and they will be there for as long as they are needed. Typically, air ambulances transport wounded soldiers categorized as urgent patients from point of injury to a medical facility within an hour of soldiers being wounded. A dust of crew consisted of four people, two pilots, a medic and a crew chief. Usually, one pilot would fly the helicopter while the other acted as aircraft commander. The commander would navigate, monitor all of the radio transmissions, talk to the unit requesting the medevac, and would take over flying if the pilot were injured. The medic kept the helicopter stocked with necessary medical supplies, and the crew chief would maintain the helicopter in top working condition. To perform the missions, the air ambulance pilots often had to fly into areas subject to intense enemy small arms fire. Later in the war, pilots encountered more formidable obstacles, such as Russian and Chinese-made ground-to-air missiles. No air ambulance pilot could depend on a ground commander's assurance that a pickup zone was secure. Mortar and small arms fire often found a zone just as the helicopter touched down. Enemy soldiers were known to patiently hide for hours around an ambush patrol, looking for the inevitable rescue helicopter. From 1965 to 1970, the US Army in Vietnam perfected techniques of aeromedical evacuation that helped save the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans and Vietnamese, both friend and foe, both soldiers and civilians. Many of the techniques had been worked out in the early years of the US involvement in Vietnam, from 1962 to 65, when only the 57th and 82nd Medical Detachment offered air ambulance service to US and South Vietnamese armies. Since most of the pickups were made within range of the surgical field or evacuation hospital, the ambulances usually overflowed the battalion aid stations and division clearing stations, which could offer only basic emergency treatment that was already available on the helicopter and deposited the patients at a facility that offered definitive resuscitative treatment, although the less serious patients often found themselves over-evacuated. The practice saved thousands of patients who demanded immediate life-saving surgery. Pilots and crews also had to contend with the ever-present danger of a serious accident. Until later in the war, most of the pilots lacked the instrumental skills needed to cope with the poor visibility typical of night missions and weather missions. The DECA navigation system installed in the UH-1Bs and the UH-1Ds proved virtually useless early in the war. More pilots died from night and weather induced accidents than from enemy fire. Night missions called for a few specialized techniques. En route at night to a pickup zone, an air ambulance would fly with either its external rotating beacon or position lights on. Once below 1000 feet, on its approach to the zone, it would douse these lights and dim its interior instrument panel lights as soon as the ships drew within range of the enemy fire. About 500 feet from the touchdown, the pilot would briefly turn on his landing light to get a quick look at the pickup zone. Then he would douse the landing light until the last 200 feet of approach. All helicopter pilots in Vietnam had to cope with problems for which they might be unprepared or poorly equipped. By the nature of their work, air ambulance pilots experienced such problems more often than transport and gunship pilots. 
Except for the medevac helicopters of the first cavalry division, the air ambulances carried no armament heavier than the pilots' M16 rifles, and most of the air ambulance missions were executed by a single ship rather than a well-prepared team known as a gaggle. After the build-up of American forces began in 1965, the helicopters, procedures and rescue equipments were improved and sometimes tested on mass casualties. Refinement of the system was made after the Tet Offensive in 1968, and Army air ambulances evacuated more patients in 1969 than in any other year of the war. Then, as it began to withdraw its forces from Vietnam, the US Army set up a training program to pass on its skills in air ambulance work to the South Vietnamese Army and Air Force. Dunstaff and Medway crews flew more than 496,000 missions from 1962 to 1973. 90 pilots were killed, and nearly 380 were wounded, and 121 crew members were killed and 545 wounded. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.